And welcome to this video where I want to go over the process that I would use to make a brush like this. I have to dedicate this to my sister-in-law, Becca, whose enthusiasm inspired this model. There's a few ways to uh, make this bristle pattern, and this is going to be uh, one of several. Uh, there are advantages and disadvantages to each method, and the advantage to the method that I'm going to use is to get the circular uh, ball patterned with the uh, bristle. So again, there's a few different ways. This is one of several and I think I might upload uh, remaking this brush using different methods. So let's get started. I'm going to select the top plane and start a sketch. And from here I will create the oval feature of my brush by going to my ellipse and I can apply dimensions from here to here. Let's go with seven inches and then uh, for a width, I'll go with four. And now we'll constrain this to be vertical and we'll be fully constrained. And I can exit the sketch. From here, I'll begin sketching on my right plane. Actually, I'll sketch on my front plane and I'll sketch a three-point arc going from side to side, and we'll give this arc a radius of three. So looking at it um, directly, that looks pretty good. From here, we'll make a second three-point arc, this time on the right plane. And we'll add some constraints. I'll, uh, Make this coincident, and as over here. And now I can choose these two arcs. Perhaps I should select my midpoint and this arc and choose coincident or pierce. Okay, we have everything we need to make a surface. But before we make this surface, I want to use a body pattern for those bristles. And that will allow us to be able to filter out the bodies that we don't want later on. So let, let's get into it and I'll show you what I mean. I'll get into my right plane and I'll choose a sketch coincident here, make a three point arc, and I'll come straight down. And I'll have this point be the center point of my bristle be coincident onto the origin. I'm over constrained somewhere around here. Let me get rid of this coincident, that fixed it. Oh, I see what happened. We're coincident onto this line, that's good enough. Uh, from here I can add some dimensions. Let's say I want to have my bristle be something like 20 thou wide, so I'll make this 10 thou because that's the center line. We'll make this three quarters of an inch tall and we'll give this a radius of 50 thou. From here, I'll choose a tangent arc. No, that's not the right one. I'll just go with a simple three point arc. Zoom way in and fill in the bottom of my bristle. And I can choose tangent. Now I'll say revolve around this point. And I have a bristle. From here, I will um, under Patterns, choose Curve Driven Pattern. And as my features, I have uh, Revolve pre-selected, so I'll choose my direction as this curve that will make up this surface. And you'll notice um, my settings have automatically made every bristle normal to my curve. To get that, um, instead you can choose Transform or Offset. I prefer Offset because uh, Transform gives me some distance that I don't want there. So offset. And then I also choose tangent to curve. 
if I align to seed, they're all pointing the same way that my original is. So if I'm tangent to curve, that is the true reflection of what my brush sh should be. I'm going to give this a pattern of 20 bristles on this upper half. And um, I'll give this equal spacing. Uh, looks pretty good. Okay. With that being said, it is very important. Instead of features and faces, I want to pattern this as a body. And this body will, will help us as we use this method later on. Again, if we were to do a different method, we won't need to uh, pattern as bodies. But this is the method that I'm going with right now for kind of a more realistic looking bristle. Okay, now I can go back to my pattern, curve driven pattern. And under this direction, I can choose this line or this arc. And I will again pattern as a body and choose this body. We simply flip the direction and we know that we're symmetric on both sides. Uh, with that done, I can go ahead and pattern all of these bodies. Again, pattern, curve driven pattern. And under this direction, I'll choose here bodies. I'll simply click on my bristles. And from here, I'm going to pattern, um, let's go with nine. And that looks, um, it's starting to look kind of brush-ish. And there's our pattern. From here, it's probably easiest to continue to pattern. So I'll finally have another curve-driven pattern. And I'll choose this as a direction. Come down to bodies. And simply uh, pattern in the other direction. So I've got a complete set of bristles. I uh, am going to then create a surface. And to do that, I'll go surfaces. And I'm going to choose a filled surface. You could certainly do a swept surface or something like that if you wanted to. And I'm going to fill this area. And my constraint curves will be here. Oops, but I have to actually choose constraint curves. Here. And here. And there's our surface. Okay, now, uh, perhaps one thing that would be kind of fun is I can already start adding appearances. I'll apply one to the entire part. And we'll say plastic, medium gloss, red, maybe blue. Maybe making a blue brush would be kind of fun. I already made one that was, that was red. Now I'll choose this face, and we'll make this, uh, again, medium gloss, perhaps black. Okay, so now we've got the beginning of our brush, but we have too many bristles because the patterns, we really can't be that selective with the body pattern. So to solve this, we're going to perhaps come up here and say delete, and we can delete and keep a body. And now I'll simply look around my model and choose which bristles I do not want to keep. And there we've got a brush, um, and I'm ready to begin modeling some of the uh, other parts of, 
these surfaces. So I'll go to my surface fill and choose this sketch and we'll say uh, filled surface again and we'll just fill in the bottom of that fills in blue and then we'll say uh, probably knit we'll knit these together so we'll knit this surface to this surface and that will create a solid and merge everything so now we've got a solid and you can tell we're solid all the way through there's no hollow points there and I'm ready to begin sketching the rest of the body of my brush. Uh, I can use surfacing. I think it would be pretty easy to go right back on the top plane and model the rest as solid. So to do that, I'll uh, start by making, oh, perhaps another ellipse. And we'll give this dimensions um, from here to here. Let's go with four inches. And I can, of course, make that vertical. And then my overall width, uh, perhaps I can say two and a half inches. And that's kind of a nice outer boundary there. There we go. I'll give this a tangent relation. Uh, maybe I should give this a radius of about five. And then I'll use a tangent arc. And we can give this a radius of something like an inch and a half. And we'll make this um, vertical with its center point, which will make us tangent to horizontal and give this nice uh, vertical constraints. So now we're kind of half and half. I'll take this arc center from my origin to be something like nine inches and add in a center line. And I can simply mirror my sketch entities about my center line. I'll use a power trim. There's the body of my brush. Now that I am fully constrained, I'll uh, extrude this. Perhaps about a half inch would be appropriate for a brush like this. And of course, we'll need to reverse the direction. Perhaps that, that's looking a bit thin. I'm going to go with one inch. There we go. And I'll add in a fillet. Uh, since I went one inch, I'll go a half inch around so the fillets are tangent to one another without any straight in between. And I'll choose a regular edge fillet at a radius of half an inch. Finally, uh, maybe a last little detail. I'll sketch on this face. I'll do a slot. And we'll do something like quarter inch. And then maybe I'll make my center line half an inch. And I'll take this little arc and make this guy concentric so we're fully constrained. And we'll cut through all. Maybe give it a uh, fillet of something like 150 thou. Here and here. And there's our brush. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if it was, please subscribe. I think the takeaway here is that you can model these bristles as bodies. The advantage is that 
you can have some of the more complex, you know, round head on the bristle. Um, another way of doing it is uh, doing a sketch using split line and patterning a sketch out using split line, but uh, that would pr produce an extrusion of the bristle, but it would be very hard to get that uh, revolve on all the bristles quickly or efficiently. So uh, split line has a lot of advantages. It's quick, it's easy, but uh, it, uh, it doesn't have the sort of functionality that patterning as a body would. So there's an advantage of a curve-driven pattern, but perhaps I'll cover some split lines in the future as well. Uh, thank you for watching. Again, please subscribe. Best way to help me back, and I'll catch you in the next video.